Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Jason Flores from the Endurance Lab, and welcome to Coach's Corner. This is gonna be a place where the coaches from the Endurance Lab, both the Open and the Women's Lab, are gonna get an opportunity to bring up some of the topics that have come up in the lab and allow riders, um, both in the lab and out of the lab, to kind of get an idea of what happens in the lab. A quick history about the Endurance Lab. It started over a year ago with our community here at Team ODZ wanting to find a more structured, a more community-based way to, to uh, train and to also find a community that they could band together and be able to find a way to get stronger. And over the year, this is what has it evolved to. We've got coaches on board as well as some, some really great plans and a really great community that has supported it. Um, I'd like to introduce some of the coaches that are here on the call today. I'll start with myself. My name is Jason Flores. By day, I'm an optometrist. I am a USAC certified coach, as well as um, with special interest in hydration and um, feeding just on and off the bike. You can catch me on my uh, live stream uh, in the Feed Zone on Fridays, where we talk about uh, current articles in the media that, that helps to open writers' minds to different things as far as making informed decisions about what they're doing on and off the bike. Next up, we've got Taya. Good morning, Taya. Good morning, everyone. Taya Freestead here. I'm a USA Cycling Certified Coach, full-time, and also a TRX coach specializing in strength training for cyclists. I lead a ride for Team ODZ, Chat and Chill, every Monday, where we talk about different topics related to training and nutrition and frequently have guest speakers. So you can watch me live on those. And also I lead the Odivas Ladies Race. Next up is Andrea. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Andrea and I'm a qualified pharmacist and nutritional therapist. And I've also studied extensively in sports nutrition and uh, functional medicine and I do healing work as well. So it's a lot in the mix there. So hopefully this will support people in many ways. Who's next? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name's Ian. Ian, I'm the uh, resident evil elf, they call me sometimes here, um, affectionately given to by me by one of the ODZ members. I'm an International Triathlon Coach Association uh, certified triathlon coach and an Army Master Fitness Trainer. I run the Skills and Drills workouts on Wednesday evenings, Skills and Drills uh, class on Wednesday evenings, where we go over the basics of uh, racing and tactics and techniques for new riders who are getting into the Zwift racing scene, group riding scene, and the in real life racing scene. Um, and lastly, we've got um, Mitch. Go ahead, Mitch. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mitch. I'm a uh, USA Cycling Certified Coach. Been riding with Team ODZ uh, really since the very beginning. Lead a weekly coffee ride on Wednesday mornings and... Uh, and a lot of workouts through the week as well. So it's a great to, uh, to be here this morning. That's great. Thanks for everybody putting time aside. We really appreciate that. We're going to go jump straight into Coach's Corner here, and we're going to go take you right into the lab this week. And we're going to quick get a quick update of what's going on in the lab this week. Taya, what do we got going on in the women's lab? So for the women's endurance lab, this is week two of the lab. Everybody is really now getting into the groove of things. We are still in a fairly hard week with hard workouts, but everyone is doing their best in great spirits and sharing their experiences. Excellent, excellent. So um, moving over to um, the Open Lab, um, Ian, what have we got going on in week five with Open Lab? Yeah, so week five is uh, the last, last beginning uh, to our build to worlds. We have uh, a group, we have our group just coming off recovery week, and a lot of people are experiencing the the dead leg syndrome of coming off recovery week for those who actually took the recovery week. We've got a couple of really hard lactic threshold uh, efforts on, mo on Monday, Tuesday timeframe, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday window. We had the, the 43015 uh, seated race simulation and the endurance lab SST uh, workout, the longer workout on Saturday to help us prep for that uh, longer world's race. Excellent, excellent. excellent. All right, so, so next, next up, um, I'd, I'd like to bring in what we call hot topics in the lab. And so what this portion of the Coach's Corner will be is we're going to bring up a topic that has been really hot on the Facebook group or in um, the discourse uh, forum from the women's side to kind of 
highlight um, that information, see if we could bring it kind of forward and get some information um, from us. So from the Women's Lab, um, we'll take it from uh, Andrea first. Go ahead. Yes. Um, there's been a lot of questions about what to eat after training sessions. And I think the first thing we all need to look at is that the training sessions aren't that long, but they are intense. So the total calorie intake for the day doesn't need to go up massively, but we need to be looking at where we're timing it around our training so that we're fueling for it and recovering after it well so that subsequent training sessions are good quality. So it's always very important and women often fall short of protein requirements. So a little bit of protein before, and we're talking specific, specifically her, here after training, it's good to get some protein in to help with the muscle repair and recovery and for your immune system. So it needn't be a, a huge quantity, but it does need to be there. So I just came off Taya's endurance ride this morning and I had some mackerel, which was my quality protein with my healthy fats. But it could be having a slice of meat or a slice of turkey or some eggs. Um, if you're short on time, some whey protein or a vegan protein in a smoothie can be good. I, I do think it's good to try and get real food in because this is usually packaged up with some other form of nutrition. Then we need to get in our, you know, we, we have to hit our daily intake for our vegetables and, and some fruits. So if you can in that meal, get in some, some veggies or some chopped up herbs um, or I had avocado with my mackerel. And then just a little bit of carbs, um, complex carbs, natural. So whole grain bread, rye bread, oats, rice, quinoa millet. It needn't be a large amount. If you're having a smoothie, it could be a banana. Just some in there. Um, I don't think it's a time for cutting out macros right now when there's a lot of new skills and different strengths um, being worked on in the lab. So just to get something in to help that recovery and then to continue on throughout your day with your focus being on quality getting in the good stuff. And that should ensure that you feel good and fresh for your next session. Excellent, that's some really good information. Um, it, oftentimes, you know, people are trying to burn what we call burning candle at two sides and really focusing on what you talked about there, I think um, is really key. Um, Taya, what do you have on your side? Something that came up and it was surprisingly um, a hot topic for most of the writers in the lab was cadence. As it turns out, there was a post about cadence and everybody jumped in to say that they are used to riding at 80, under 80 or 85 RPMs, which is something hard on the body that can be something that um, puts pressure on the tendons over time. It is something that accumulates lactate um, and makes your legs burn and get tired faster. So what we what have been talking about and doing is working on increasing that cadence. The advantages of doing that, you can be more efficient with your writing, you can clear lactate faster, um, and surprisingly enough, over time, as you practice high cadence, you will find that you're able to produce more power and go faster, or at least produce the same amount of power and it feels less costly on your legs. We have had a couple of high RPM intervals in the first week and now going into the second week as well so this has been very useful for our riders and next week we get into single legged drills which will also be useful that's excellent Tia. yeah i think we've had the same conversation in the open lab and the conversation goes very similarly how do i get my cadence up how do i learn it's just so easy with um, ERG workouts like we have um, to kind of just get to that low grind. I think it's really important that we emphasize as coaches that they are upping their cadence because it's just so much more efficient for them. So that's great. Let's move over to the Open Lab. Um, Mitch, what do we got going on in the Open Lab as far as a hot topic? Yeah, so one thing that we always struggle with, we're all professionals, we all have families, or, or I'm assuming most of us do, and we well, all think that- Speak for yourself about professionals, Mitch. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Um, so what we deal with a lot of time is, is where are we putting that workout during our day and what happens when our schedule changes? So I think one of the best practices I've always used is I schedule my workouts early so that nothing can really get in the way my workout and my workouts don't get in the way of my family and, and work. So I try to get all my workouts done early. I try to make sure that I'm not impacting anyone but myself. But that also means I've got to take care of myself on the other end and make sure I get to sleep early enough so I can get up and do those workouts. 
Now, that being said, we all have things that come up and it, what do you do then? Do you move the workout? Do you skip the workout? And I think you've got to really pay attention and really learn about your body over time and say, you know, what is this workout that I'm maybe going to have to move? And how can I stack it up with the other ones? You can't move a workout from the morning to the evening when you've got another super hard workout in the morning the next day. So you've got to be smart and you've got to be willing to say sometimes, look, that workout's just not going to happen. And in the long run, I'm going to be okay. You can't chase the uh, TSS or the hard workouts and stack them all up on the same day or in two days on the weekend. It just does not work. It's not good. Enough. Excellent. No, I think it's something that everyone... Um constantly have questions and a lot of times you'll find a quick text um, during the middle of the day be like um, XYZ is happening and should I go forward and sometimes we need to be the voices for our athletes often and say you know what it's okay <laughs> you can you can skip this and let's just let's just regroup um, recover and then let's come back tomorrow stronger um, we'll move on to Ian what else we've got going on in the open lab yeah, so Jason, one of the things that, that I see actually uh, piggybacks on what Mitch was saying. Uh, we talk about people, feel, we hear about people feeling tired and exhausted and dead. And, you know, at a certain, certain point in our build cycle, that's okay. At the last, last few days of a three-week build, I expect everyone to feel tired and dead. But what we're starting to see is some people are throwing a lot in or they're, cra or they're cramping their workouts into uh, very tight schedules and they're not getting their, their sufficient recovery. And so they're not able to get the workout done or they don't get all the stars on a Zwift workout. And God forbid that happens. You only get 22 or 23 stars. Um, and so they want to go back and hit it again. Now, we're not in a competition in our, in our labs. It's not a who's going to move on and get a, a, a contract op, uh, opportunity. So it's okay if you don't get all your stars. And one of the things we, we have to do, and we've been doing, I think, a good job in, in, the, in the lab with our athletes is explain to them, if you don't get all your stars, that's okay. You don't need to repeat the workout. If the workout was such that you're just, you're too exhausted and you couldn't get it done, let it go, move on and, and come back another day to the next workout. Because if you keep trying to stack workouts or redoing these workouts, you're chasing that TSS dragon and you'll, you'll never get there. And uh, all you'll do is break your body down. Like, like I did a few months ago and had to, had to take three or four days off just because I was sick. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. Um, chasing the TSS dragon. We'll have to uh, put that up there uh, to, the, to the Endurance Lab sayings there. Yeah, I like that. So um, the next part we have here is called Rider of the Week. Um, we'll start with the Women's Lab. Um, I'll um, hand it over to uh, Taya for our um, Women's Lab Rider of the Week. For our lab, we had uh, something really cool happening. Jen is one of our writers. She... Um, came through a big breakthrough in her training. So this was prompted by um, a post and a video that we got from Nate last. He is a mental skills coach that participates in the lab. And so Janice recognized that she had a significant mental hurdle in racing. It was something that was literally making her stop racing. Um, every time she hit a threshold, her threshold power, her heart rate was up she had a negative reaction to that and didn't want to race anymore. So through the lab and some of the exercises that Nate suggested, she was able to overcome that hurdle and that anxiety of racing through following some of the recommendations Nate had, which was staying in the moment, shifting your focus to other things that are not the power or the heart rate and, uh, having that shift that will allow you to stay in a moment and progress in your race. She went out and did the race this week and had an excellent outcome. And she was very pleased with that and shared uh, with the lab this week. What an inspiring story. Um, definitely heard a little bit about that, um, um, that rider. And, you know, many riders um, are looking to find this mental, mental um, leap or mental uh, kind of step. And I think more and more as coaches, it's something that we um, should be educating ourselves about. Nate Lass has been a great resource, both in the open lab and the women's lab. So definitely um, check out those. So in the open lab, I'm going to go ahead um, and um, introduce our writer of the week. Um, her, her name is uh, Kirsten. Um, really great story. Um, a lot of times uh, you think writer of the week is the person who rode the hardest, who got the most 
TSS and that sort of thing. But in this case, it's kind of some a really, really fun story. She's actually um, on vacation on holiday with her family. Um, she was sharing um, with the lab as far as she actually was able to kind of hide or sneak her both her bike and her, well, I don't know if about her bike, about hiding that, but hiding her trainer um, out to a vacation, and she managed to get set up. She's um, on a beach house. You could do all kinds of things um, at the beach, but she is set up in the basement of her beach house in a little kitchenette between that and a pool table um, and able to be able to look out onto the beach and do workouts every morning um, for the endurance lab. So I think, um, Kirsten, you get rider of the week from us here um, at the Coach's Corner. So, and more, more important, Jason, she was able to heat up her coffee while riding. This is true. <laughs> That's true. She did say she was able to heat up her coffee, and it sparked a lot of conversation about people moving their espresso machines and Keurigs into their um, pain caves so that they would be able to do coffee um, during those longer rides. So I, I think that's definitely something we'll need to, uh, to, uh, to bring into the lab, uh, the, 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 the coffee machine uh, within arm's reach. I like that. So um, before we go, um, these are kind of our three little topics that we'll be reaching every week, um, what's going on in the lab, our hot topics, and um, writer of the week. So we hope you found this really interesting, um, and we hope you guys learn more from this or actually hear from the coaches more. We just wanted to hear the voice behind the coaches of, the, of both endurance labs. Um, so with that, I'm going to sign off. I want to thank everybody here for our first episode. Thank all our coaches for their time. And if you guys have any information that you'd like to bring to the Coaches Corner or have questions, go ahead and bring them up. Um, in your respective labs, and we can bring them to the Coach's Corner. We're going to look to do this kind of at a more frequent um, interval, and so if we can, we'd like to bring these um, as much as we can. We do enjoy what we do. We enjoy your guys' passion, and we are driven by the community. So we hope that you get a lot out of that. With that, and by all the coaches here, I want to say thank you for listening, and then good evening, good afternoon, and good night from the Endurance Lab, Coach's Corner.